morning, everyone. It's theCUBE live at ClickWorld 23 from beautiful Las Vegas, sunny and windy Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. We are so excited, Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante, to be here covering this event. And fresh from the keynote stage, Dave, we've got some awesome guests. We've got CEO Mike Capone on theCUBE for the first time. Great to have you. Crawford Del Pret joins us as well, president of IDC. Guys, Thanks, great to have you. Hey guys. Fresh from the keynote stage. Hey guys. Great. great to be here. So Mike, you talked about, I, I loved when, when we were leaving the, this morning, the keynote, standing room only, packed house, great to see all these people back, wanting to see and hear what's on the horizon with like so much change in, right. in your five years. You talked mm -hmm. this morning about the 30th anniversary yeah. of Click. So much innovation that's happened. I also saw, congrats are due to you, that you were named a finalist for the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2023, Greater Philadelphia Area. Talk to us a little bit about the state of the state of the land at Click. What keeps you as optimistic as we saw you on the main stage? Yeah, well first, it, it's just great to be back. I mean, you look around and you see in-person events are back and live, and I think you feel the energy. You got to see the energy from the crowd. So actually what makes me optimistic and excited is, is, is this, like just all our customers and partners here giving us energy, giving us feedback, so it's been great. Uh, but look, no C-level executives turning on a conversation about data and analytics right now and how it can make their company stronger, better, compete more, and that's what we do. Um, and we've, over the past 30 years, you're right, we've been in business 30 years, and we thrive and survive because we're resilient and we're innovative. And we started out as this little visual analytics company coming out of Sweden, and over time, we've added capabilities to the platform. We've done 10 acquisitions over the last five years to really extend out and add capabilities like data integration uh, and uh, data quality, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So it's been a really great journey, and we're just really excited. And I think the next 30 years looks as good as the last 30. 30, over 38,000 customers across, across industries. You had some great folks on stage this morning. I always love when you, when you had Ford up. Yes. You talked about it's a 100 year old company. Yeah. I always love seeing companies like that who've gone from you know, the industrial revolution now to right. the digital age successfully because we all expect us in our consumer lives, we're connected yeah. regardless of where we are. Yeah. Talk a little bit about some of the, of the voice of the customer and how they're really articulating the value prop Right. and the crop that will bring you in. Yeah, so Ford is an excellent example. You're right, they were at the forefront of the industrial revolution. They invented the assembly line, the assembly line for cars. Model yeah. T Fords came off the assembly line. That was a, a dramatic revolution in how manufacturing was done. And now Ford is in the midst of another revolution, which is a data revolution. They have put connected technology in all of their cars. They're streaming data live from all of their cars um, to tell you things like, hey, like, you need an oil change, by the way, we're going to set you up, everything's going to be there for you, anticipating customer needs, and that's really what we're seeing from our customers. How do we leverage data, not the old way, you know, which is like locked up in an old database of data warehouse, but the new way, which is real time, in the moment, to improve experiences of our, our employees and our customers. That, that's what our customers are talking to us about. So Crawford, uh, the last 120 days or so has just been amazing. I mean, prior to ChatGPT coming up, everybody was talking about lar large language models, and yeah. now that's all anybody talks about. You made a point that the time to create stuff is just being compressed. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm curious as, I mean, it's, it's, it's down to months and sometimes even days when you look at things like auto G GPT. Yeah. So how do you think about that? You also talked about the era of multiplied innovation, so right. those things come together. How do you see that in the context of, of disruption generally, and, and where does, click fit in that Yeah, matrix. so it's a, it, it's a good point. So when you think about where we are in the cycle, before, when we, when we were looking at the pandemic, we were seeing people leaning into digital transformation. We were seeing IT growth, six, seven uh, per percent. We're seeing software still double digit growth. So now, what we've seen is the market has started to rotate. And now we're seeing that uh, companies are focused on a really turbulent, complicated economic environment, which I think is kind of creating a smoke screen. But the reality is, companies are still investing. This is why we're seeing double digit software growth. This is why we're seeing exponential growth in data continuing going forward. So we believe that this era of multiplied innovation, when the four of us are at the old folks home, <laughs> we'll be talking about this as this golden era of IT, this opportunity to build hundreds of millions of, 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 of applications and get tremendous value from it. Now, enter what we're seeing with these large language models. We believe that 
company's data is going to be, or it will be more valuable than it's ever been before. Customers, right, the jobs customers want to get done around their data, Mike and I were talking about this last night, it, they don't really change, the jobs don't change. What changes is the technology that you can bring to make people better at their roles. And where Click fits in is where, from an end-to-end -end spectrum standpoint, whether that be getting your data, getting your data set in order, being able to make better decisions on that data set, making decisions in the actual job flow of your, uh, of your constituents, whether that be by vertical or whether that, by, whether that be by um, uh, heterogeneous uh, industries, that's what companies are going to need to do. People think about these large language models as something separate from applications. I think it's absolutely the wrong way to think about it. Sure, the large language models, I can make an argument they'll commoditize over time. The large language models are what's going to feed better decisions in the applications. And that's where Click, having companies be able to present their data, better analytics, understand where they can make better decisions, that's where the power comes so in. So Mike, follow up on that. So you, I like to, when, you talk about the old way and the new way. Yeah. The new way presumably is the, the modern data stack. I was in last night talking to some of your cloud partners, and we heard Ford is on GCP, you had Snowflake over there, Databricks, we know AWS, Azure, they have, they've all got you know, so-called modern data platforms. So when thinking about the new way and what Crawford just said, how do you see the new way evolving, not just the modern data stack, but even beyond that uh, in terms of data pipelines, data integration, and that intelligent automation, I think yeah. you called it, in terms of the impact on the speed at which we'll be able to get to data quality, and where that takes us through, let's call the end of the decade. Yeah, so I, I could certainly start off. Yeah, I think the, the, in my keynote I talked about, about the thing that matters is action, right? So, and you know, CEOs like, like me, you know, we don't really care about the plumbing so much, right? We want, we want action, so the data pipeline, it has to be it's kind of prevalent everywhere. Um, that ability to bring data, trusted data, high quality data, high velocity data, business ready, into you know, your analytics infrastructure. But then the important part is the, the point you alluded to, which is, that's to be able to take action. If information is sitting in a report or a dashboard, it's not helping your business. It's that last mile where you get an insight that the analytics gave you from this modern stack that you've built, but now, the, through intelligent automation, you can automatically do something with it. No human involved, you don't need that anymore. What you need is the ability to trigger a transaction, change pricing, um, update inventory, uh, you know, make, it, make a decision and then action it in the, in the systems, as Crawford talked about. That's kind of where the future is going. So automating, we've historically we've automated business processes, now you're talking about automating decisions. Automating decisions based on insights that you get out of analytics that you maybe didn't know a minute ago. Right, and that's where right. we talk about these large language models, we talk about AI, ML, AI, right? You're learning insights and, and you're, you're learning all the time. It's continuous learning. It's not some predetermined algorithm that you've built. It really is kind of modern ML, AI, decision making, looking forward, not backwards. Do you, do you think that, that we'll get to the point, right, right now, the data is embedded in the business logic. Do you think that is flipping? I mean, Ford talked about 650 data elements. Are we going to be, see a day where we Im Im embed the business logic in the data? And so we can actually make kind of real-time decisions. You guys talk about stuff in IoT, and the edge, and factories, mm -hmm. and that's a whole different ball game. Yeah, but let's talk about look, looking forward. So you're right, I mean, I think the, the whole world, everything was premised on historical patterns and then setting things up to say, all right, when this happens, is, you know, do this. But now, it's like, we don't know what's going to happen. It's the whole world today, right? Suez so Canal, the disruption, black swan events. So having the data real-time streaming, you may get a new insight, and you may do something that you've never done before. That's kind of the modern data and analytics landscape, insights to action. We also call it active intelligence. That's the, that's the way the future's going. You talked about uh, the massive uncertainty that we're living in, we have been for a while, and one of the themes of this event is, is delivering that certainty. You mm -hmm. also shared a set I'd love to, for you to share to our audience in terms of how Click is enabling its customers to actually leverage AI and machine learning successfully. We talk with so many customers or hear so many stories of, of AI projects that aren't succeeding. Right. How is Click different, and I want to, Crawford, get your perspective on that as well. Yeah. How are you helping customers really leverage AI and machine learning to drive those insights, take action? Yeah, well I think the historical failing of, of AI and, and, and ML is that it's always been this thing over here, right? So you had the white coat data scientists who were very specialized, and the problem was you had to take data out of wherever you had it, hand it to those people so they could write some R and Python code on, on it, you could put it into like a third party tool, to get some, to do, to build some, you know, pattern recognition and get to, um, you know, get to an algorithm. Now, what we've done is we brought AIML AI into the analytics platform, right? So you did all this work to get your data ready for analytics, and then you take it out. How dumb is that? Yeah. That's crazy. 
like bring the AI ML there. And what we're seeing now is two or three of our customers are in the cloud actually building models inside of their analytics platform. You don't have to take it out anymore. And when you do that, and then you get the, then you get the insight, you build, that, you build that algorithm, now it's there, it's already there, and you can start using it right away. And that's what you were talking about, Crawford. It, yeah. it, the AI and ML is going to be embedded into the applications. Right. You know, it's not like this separate thing. Yeah, and thing. the more you think about it as something separate, the more you're talking about <laughs> what Mike's talking about, which is sort of this unfortunate world that we were kind of <laughs> in for a long time. This is really about making better decisions in the workflow, which is, what drives the workflow? The app, right. right? So the inside that app is where you can start making, and you can do that across functions. It's the, it's the client success manager, she, her, giving her a better recommendation to make that customer um, happier. It's the salesperson. How do you have a, how do you have a follow on recommendation to be able to close the deal with an ML, with a, with a, with a piece of AI that basically says, look, there's a 79 or 80% or chance you're going to close this if you uh, propose this given these conditions. That's, I think, where we're going to start evolving to and, and, and where we're seeing those early signs right now. So I'm going to run so, something by both of you. Yeah. Mike, you talk about sort of, we've been looking at the past and this is the, we're in a new world <laughs> now. I've been working on a, a, a model of data for the future. And I use Uber as the example, where you have riders, drivers, routes, uh, destinations, and everything, those are d data elements. And, yeah. and they're all coherent. Mm -hmm. And so, when I talk to customers, I'm inferring, they don't necessarily say this directly, but they kind of do. Mm -hmm. We want a digital representation of our business, people, places, things, in real time, mm -hmm. with all these coherent data elements. Is that futuristic to you? Is that here you know, today? Is that sort of midterm, long term? Mm -hmm. Is it even a viable model of the data future? Oh, it's 100% viable, so we, you're great, great customer, public reference, our mark, you know, they run all the sports concessions for uh, sports stadiums, for example. Real time, they're streaming information about what's going on at that game. Obviously all the concessions, all the food, everything, what's selling, what's not selling, should we be changing pricing? But they're also streaming in the weather. They're streaming in the score of the game. Are people going to start leaving? Is it really cold? And they're, make, and they're representing that real time, and then they're making decisions about, should we unfreeze more hot dogs? Should we make more hot chocolate? Should we lower pricing? The hot dogs aren't going to taste very good tomorrow if they're all still here. So, and then they push pricing changes back dynamically to their point of sale systems to optimize what's going on in the game. So what you're talking about exists today and they have a big command center and they see it all in real time. And that's the, one of the things I think we learned in the pandemic was access to real-time data and insights is no longer a nice to have for organizations in any yeah. industry. No, it's, it's demanded. It yeah. absolutely is demanded. It's required to be successful going forward. Yep. Right, I mean, and as consumers, we, we, we expect to be connected 24-7 as we talked about, and get whatever I want from whoever, wherever I am, and right. that expectation isn't going anywhere. And I think the key is embedding that into workflows that exist today, and then extending that into new workflows in the future. Right. Yeah. All, right, all right, different subject, M&A. Yeah. Um, you, guys, you guys have been on a TAM expansion tear. Yeah. Um, so I was telling the audience up front, the Click used to come on in the early days of big data, you know, kind of cool viz totally transformed the company. I think, I think I counted nine acquisitions, I'm sure I'm probably maybe missing some. Yep. How are you thinking about go forward with regard to organic investment mm -hmm. versus inorganic investment? Yeah, so your counting is good. Um, math is <laughs> correct, we've done nine, and uh, Talon, which is in flight right now, when it closes will be the 10th, yep. in my tenure, so since uh, in the last five years. Um, look, it's all been customer informed, so it's all it's all been informed by customers saying, look, the analytics, your analytics are great, they're best in class, but my problem is bigger. My problem is much bigger. It's getting raw data out of all these crazy places, out of all these sources, um, into an analytics ready format, and then as Crawford pointed out, it's about then actioning it, getting it into the app, getting, getting those insights into where it's useful for the customers so they can get the most value out of it, right? And so that's informed our M&A strategy, and the good news is there's been some really terrific companies that we've been able to partner with and acquire that have extended our platform well at the same time. We spent the last, you know, kind of five years, or since uh, 2016, we spent half a billion dollars organically. Um, so it's a really great balance of internal R&D spend as well as M&A, and you should expect that to, to continue. Uh, we've got a very strong balance sheet you should expect us to continue doing more M&A as appropriate. Well, Attunity was a home run. Again, those are guys early on in the big data world. We, yeah. They would come on the cube and we'd try to figure out, okay, where do they fit? And that been a, a game changing for you guys. Um, talk about the, the rationale for the talent acquisition, where there's overlap, where there's differentiation. I mean, I looked at the data that I had and there was a lot of click inside of talent accounts. I mean, pretty, pretty heavy overlap. Uh, maybe not so much the reverse, so that was, I think, a really a, a, a real positive, but what's the rationale, and, and, and where's the, where are the gaps, and where's the sort of overlaps? 
Yeah, it's highly complimentary. So I, I was saying on stage today that from the first day I got to Click, Talon was on my shopping list of companies that I thought would make an excellent partner for us. What we bring, initially what we brought was a strong analytics, ML, AI. You mentioned the Attunity acquisition. Yeah, it was a home run. Like, I, I'm really proud, really proud of that one. At the time I was a little nervous. I spent half a billion dollars, but it turned out to be an amazing acquisition because we caught the wave of this kind of modernization you know, into modern cloud data lakes. Um, so we had the kind of the, the data integration and then we've got the analytics. What Talon brings is data transformation ability to actually transform data in flight to help make a business ready. They bring data quality, they bring data preparation. So these are highly complementary capabilities to our existing platform. So we honestly think it's a match made in heaven. And there's very, very little overlap between the two organizations, which is the exact kind of acquisition that you want to do to be strategic. Garf, I got to ask you, so you said, sure. well, some people out there think this is going to require a new platform. I, I, that's like, that's me. <laughs> but, uh, but you said, no, that's not good. So let's, let's double click on that a little bit. Yeah. What did you mean by, you're saying there's a lot we can do with the existing platforms, obviously, but, but, but how far do you think existing platform, and what do we mean, mean by platform? Are we talking database, are we talking hardware? Yeah. Double click yeah. on that, please. So, so I think that, um, when, when, when you think about the way companies are, are, are structuring and thinking about their data today, um, this is a completely different relationship with data. It's a completely different set of tools that you can apply to your data to make better decisions. And I think that it, 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 you know, when you think about those centralized data analytics models, um, all the investments companies have made, there's now a way to access external tools, bring those into the organization, and then think about taking those, 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 those ML engines and applying those to workflows that you have, applying those to applications, that, and, and by the way, it's incumbent on application companies to, 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 to bring those tools in as well. That's going to feed a whole different set of skills. And it's going to mean that people are going to be interacting with their data in an entirely different way. And I would argue that from a platform standpoint, it's going to drive a whole different set of development and application development on a new set of, of, um, of, 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 of of, of data tools, right? And, and that is a new platform. Um, and, and I would argue, and I'm going to come full circle on you here, <laughs> yeah. this, like. whole new, um, <laughs> this whole new world we're entering is going, and I didn't really talk about it today because we didn't have time, but if you look at the upper right hand side of my slide, I've reintroduced the idea of the metaverse, hmm. right? Let me tell you something, the metaverse is an entirely different experience when you can apply AI to it, when you can apply the ability to basically enter the metaverse, summon up, new decisions, summon up new data, and interact with that data in a new way. And I believe this, this will, in a few years, we're going to start to have a whole different conversation about the metaverse because of the investments we're making in AI today. And so, Mike, you're down on crypto, but you're not down, are you down on the metaverse too? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not down on crypto, I just think that we serve our customers better by investing our, our earnings back into analytics. Technology yeah. As opposed to putting Bitcoin in your yeah, balance exactly. sheet. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mention crypto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love crypto, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crawford, talk a little bit about, if we look at the recent advances in analytics, in data, and AI, when customers are coming to IDC, hey yeah. guys, help us, we've got a ton of data, the data explosion yeah. is going nowhere, it's only getting bigger. What are some of the things that you talk to them about in terms of where Click is, where those trends are going? Yeah. So um, what we really talk about is you've got to bring it back to your internal customers, you've got to bring it back to the customer job that, that that customer is trying to get done. And if you can't do that, if you're just looking for quote insights in your data, you're, you, you're, you're completely lost, right? I mean, you don't, you don't really have a, a strong opportunity. And I think that um, customers right now are terrified. Mm -hmm. They're terrified because there's a lot of products out there that are sort of instantiating data and, 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 and they're getting scraped and they're not very active, what I would say. So for example, well, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want to be WebMD right now. I mean, those, those kinds of sites are in a really, really tough spot because you know, they can basically, you can get better answers out of them than sort of the static data that's put out there right now. So what we're trying to do is coach customers to be able to really think about zeroing in on the core jobs that their customers want to get done and how you can use this data to better assist the roles. Now, you have to then work backwards to the data structure that you have, the data you're collecting, what data um, can you augment, and a lot of we talk a lot with customers about this, which is, how do I take my data and augment it right. with external data that I can get to make better decisions? Yes. Are, are you? Do you see yourselves? At, I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do you see yourselves as an ISV or a platform? Click. 
Yeah, yeah. we see ourselves as a platform, but we enable <laughs> ISVs um, and you know, we enable our partners, but 100% we're uh, a platform. Of course, we, and I knew that was going to be the answer, because you know, the cloud guys think there's three platforms, right? And so, sure. you know, <laughs> but, but we know better. So given that, I think you said you're going to be number one, sorry Crawford, uh, Gartner Magic Partners, analytics, I think I got this, analytics, data integration tools, and data quality solutions. Is that, like, are those That's the correct. three yep. you talked about? Is it that, I'd like to see Gartner take all their MQs and put them together in a platform view. I mean, is it that the right way for customers should be thinking about this, as opposed to what Crawford was saying, bespoke tools? So, I don't work at Gartner, I don't know what goes on there. But <laughs> no, no, I'm not I, trying yeah, to criticize Gartner. I'm no, talking no, about how you look at the market. But this is how we look at it, it was interesting sure. because we got, like, we, I get the question, like, oh, you bought, you bought talent, does that mean you're de-emphasizing analytics? It's like, no, it's the right. exact opposite. We're making the analytics better. Like, right. the data needs to be better, um, the data quality needs to be good so that the analytics could be good. So what we're doing is we're actually doubling down on our analytics by enhancing data integration, data quality, to pro provide better outcomes, and I think, that's the thing that everybody misses, but, and I'm sure Crawford agrees with me, like, over time, everybody's going to get it. Like, this is one continuum, this isn't yeah. and, different and things. And I didn't mean to, to, to goof on Gartner, I mean, they do a great job, but, but in terms of customers making decisions, I, yeah, I see it in security, it's just this mess. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's bespoke it's, tools, and it is. it's similar things in data, so they, my, my point to you, Crawford, is shouldn't customers be thinking about the whole house mm. of the analytics, and data integration, and data quality, Platform, 100%, and, and, and I'll go back to it. why is security a mess? Security is, is a mess because the threat landscape changes daily, right. and therefore you have all these different tools that you can't argue, you know, because consolidation and security won't even fix the problem because the problem the customer is facing is changing dramatically month by month by month. In this world, this is my whole argument, the customer problem isn't necessarily changing, right. but the tools are, yeah. right. and that's where the customer really needs to think about optimizing um, for a different set of tools, and to your point, I, I, I believe this is a platform. And I believe this is a platform that can have rich application development around it. Guys, last question. And first of all, you brought the optimism, you both brought it, it's definitely contagious. Yeah. This is day one of a two day show, the show floor is already packed. Yeah. Mike, what can we expect at this show? Yeah, well we're just getting started. So you know, today you got kind of the strategic overview and Crawford and I thought did a nice job together of kind of painting yeah. what the, the future could look like. Uh, but now, next comes the product overview yeah. and the demos and the touching and feeling. You know, so more talk, more action, less talk, right? More show, le uh, less tell, and we're going to blow people away because we're going to show the end-to-end -end platform all the way from you know raw data all the way through analytics, show some of the talent capabilities, analytics platform, auto, auto ML, AI, and then some actions. It is going to be mind blowing. Show and tell, touchy feely, we love it. Mike right. Crawford, thank you so nice much you guys. for joining us on the Cube, Thanks kicking guys. off day one. Great commentary, great insights, looking forward as you say. We appreciate it. Thank you. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, this is Lisa Martin coming to you live from Las Vegas, baby. This is day one of our coverage of Click World 23. Stick around, our next guest joins us in just a minute.